um, but we've all beat the other issues to death and and since then we we see opportunities and Um, based on what we've experienced for the past five and a half years. So, what we anticipate. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's kind of lived it once and now we're going to live it better. So, yeah. I probably would map a little bit more. But... <laughs> so, this is another movie, guys. Planning Commission last time. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Because there was three names on here that aren't still here, but one of them replaced Scott. Oh, Hemmeyer. Hemmeyer. But we got Josh John Curry. Tucker, Andy, me, um, Mark, Mark, and then New and Dave. And Dave. So we had yeah. six or seven then. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Kim, Phil, and myself. So we not like that you were wrong, right? I'm just. We like Kim a lot more than we like you. <laughs> A tough crowd. <laughs> you better be able to get it and take it. Absolutely. You're going to get run over. Absolutely. All right. So as we mentioned here, right, we're going to record because yeah. we only have two point commissioners here. Sure. The goal is to make a recommendation on Thursday to the township board, which will meet the following Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We have a lot going on. We want to hit the ground running, and we have a lot of momentum. We want to keep it, right? Okay. So we just finished up. Uh, corridor plan for Thompson Road, and that's been was well, more of an update. It's been going on for 20 years. Nothing's happened. You know, update the plan. We have water coming. Water's coming down Fen Road, going across Thompson Road. Uh, one of the two main hindrances for lack of development on Thompson Road has been lack of water, and then our inter interchange from US 23 and Thompson Road. And so we have water, and we are halfway funded to get the bridge and intersection improved yeah. for 23. And this has been like in the past six months, yeah. right? <laughs> the way things are going, it's entirely possible this whole thing will be funded by next year, yeah. right? And getting an MDOT project, you know, funded, designed, and going within like four years is like not unheard of. That's where we're at right now. You know, every week we're getting new updates and like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I cannot believe how fast things are moving. So that's why we're doing interviews today. Recommendation for Thursday, you know, approved on Tuesday. That's that's what we're looking at. Okay. Great. Well, we like to see momentum. So um, did you want us to kind of step through and start that way and then Q&A? Usually I keep yeah. this informal. Certainly, please. You know, we want to have a discussion. Sure. Because before I even start with the slideshow, I truly believe this. I know it sounds cliche, but this is a dialogue when we go through a planning process. Mm -hmm. We as consultants don't come and dictate policy. We facilitate a community visioning process. We give you some assessment. We tell you some facts. You may not like the facts, but we have a dialogue about what they mean and what it means for your community. There's always, for every quantitative piece of data, there's always a qualitative piece of that's our township, that's our community. So, we call them. so that's a balancing act as we go through this. So I encourage you, you know, step in and uh, let us know anything, have questions as we flip through these. It won't be a uh, super grueling, I promise that. I'll try to keep it lively. Um, just to reintroduce myself, Emil Wisniewski, uh, principal here at Division, Movie Project Manager. Uh, I'm a planner by trade. I'm also a civil engineer and attorney. We don't mention attorney because that people are really? nervous. You know, they think big fees, corrupt, whatever. So, well, we have at least we have one attorney on our question. Yeah. Yes. And he's big. And he's corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> he's also our charter. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's got access to the money. <laughs> no one messes. Um, so I've been doing this 17 years, um, as is Ryan, and, uh, you know, we're both kind of a little bit of a multi-faceted background. We both started off as DOT employees in Ohio for the Cleveland area district at ODOT. So we come from highways and bridges, trails, all those good things, and we really went in the planning, land use, economic development direction over time because we didn't really care if a pipe was 36 inches big or 24 inches big or if the slope of the road was 2%. So we wanted to think big crazy. So that's how we got here. Um, we've been doing this in a vision for six years together. We worked in our, uh, for big firms before that, practically our entire career. So we have a long standing working relationship. 
We were doing this for a decade at bigger firms and said, let's just do this on our own. So that's a little bit about who we are. Um, as far as client base, we're, you know, Great Lakes Midwest. Um, a little bit Ohio-centric of our home state, but PA, Western New York, and into Michigan, which I'll talk about here. Oh, Brighton's pretty uh, close by. Brighton is close, yes. And we will talk about that one. That was our first foray into the region. So uh, definitely an important one to chat about. And I think there's some similarities, but some, maybe some distinctions from what I've heard on what you're doing too. Um, so we would be the prime consultant here, leading this effort, not writing the plan, graphics, data analysis, infrastructure, land use, and all the engagement tools for this. Um, like I said, we do a lot of comprehensive planning. We've done almost two dozen of these types of plans, master plans, comprehensive plans at the community scale. Um, but we also do corridor plans. So we think uh, trails, road widening, safety projects, all those types of infrastructure improvements, that's in our portfolio, as well as economic development strategies. People always want the tax base. They always want to so them. you would be the two people we would see consistently. Consistently. So we're the face of the project. That's why we're here. We also have helping us uh, Jennifer Six, so that's how you get J Six. Her name is Six, like the uh, not spelled like the number, but it sounds like it. So J Six Advisors. She works. Uh, she's a former municipal economic development director in the community outside of the Cleveland area. So she brings that municipal background, but now she does corporate site selection for big corporations, as well as helping local governments with the incentives to lure those companies in. Mm -hmm. So she's seen both sides of the aisle. Uh, really is the person you know starts calling brokers, developers, what's going on in this market, what are we seeing? So I think when we talk about shovel ready sites and getting that piece of it, what you're trying to do along Thompson Road, that's where her expertise is coming helpful for us. So I'll start with Brighton because it's just down the road. It's a great segue. Um, it's a community that we interviewed in uh, a few years ago, not unlike what we're doing here, and it was just we responded to an RFP. We didn't know anybody. We thought it was a good fit for us. Um, we came in and we were the only out of town firm and they picked us. So that was a surprise to us, but it was our first uh, step into the area. So we are still working with them now on some follow up activities some park planning, as well as helping out. They have a small recreation authority. It's just two townships. It's called Southeast Livingston County Recreation Authority for itself. We're helping them with a five year recreation plan update. So we have been ingrained there and uh, has led follow up work. So please about that. But just to step through a little bit what we did with them, a uh, similar type of master plan update. They didn't want to deviate too far from what they had before. They did have some changeover in their planning commission and board over time. They were a little more concerned about any type of growth. They were very anti-development. <laughs> so as we went into that, we found out, oh, you have great interstate access. You're at 96 and 23. You have some smaller but major corporate um, companies there along Grand River, we thought they're going to run ratchet up this development. And they're like, no, keep everybody out. And then we said, okay, you got land zone for commercial industrial uses. If you develop that, that's more tax base so people can have the parks and trails without you paying for it with milch. Yeah, yeah, we don't really do that. So, you know, just <laughs> and it, great people still working with them. They're just, this wasn't, development wasn't their focus. So I'll be blunt about that. So a little bit different. Very similar in that as you have a Fenton city, they have a Brighton city mm -hmm. that serves as their downtown. The difference is it sounds like you guys are with the Thompson Road border plan looking to do your own little civic mixed use space, ideally, where they were kind of like, we just go to Brighton, we don't need that in Brighton Township. Just a different dynamic, very similar. Water, highway access, a little bit of rural, Parks, all those things, regional parks, very similar. So just a little bit different, though, I think, of a focus for, just from this few minutes of conversation. Uh, but to cover what we did there, we did have a steering committee that was their board of trustees and then their planning commission combined into one. There's some good and bad in doing that. You didn't get many outside voices. It was basically people that um, they heard from every month. But we did get focus groups, which is the bottom, and these five areas were some people that came in three times during the process to hear about issues related to housing, business community, schools, pathways and parks, and what they call conservation, mostly ecological conservation and heritage. There's a few old barns, cemeteries, not a lot of historic structure in the township itself. But this was a good way to get some other people into the fold and have some small visioning sessions. And we did have a liaison from the steering committee on each of those smaller working groups. And I think that's important if you opt for some working groups, we'll get into that is that means consultant doesn't report back and say, oh, look what I 
Um, look what I heard. Because sometimes that leads to distrust. But it's one of your own community members helping, you know, facilitate it. Because we're still doing the work. We're taking the units. We're preparing the materials. But to have them alongside us sharing that meeting summary means a lot. I think it helps achieve that. So that's a summary of uh, Brighton. Like I said, they're working on their first township park now, which I was shocked after the plan that they would want to do anything that involves spending money. They were just very fiscally conservative to the point of they never had really kind of any investment besides maybe chipping for a roadway project. Um, so I'll take that a little bit back in other similar communities across different states. Like I said, we are kind of a Great Lakes Midwest focus. Um, townships and cities, um, both incorporated and unincorporated, that have that similar urban edge, you know, kind of fringe of the metro area dynamic, where you're maybe a half hour, hour out from the major city, but you're a bedroom community with some industry, but largely people are commuting elsewhere for their daily jobs. And I think it kind of fits in that description. Mm -hmm. Well, we said township in Ohio, very similar. In Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland, uh, you'll see horses there on the bottom, actually has five acre zoning in some areas, only on incorporated piece of the entire um, Brighton Township PA, not a typo, not a fraud. We worked in a Brighton Township in Pennsylvania, oddly enough. I don't know if they got confused and thought we worked in their township in the show, Michigan's resident. Uh, outside the Pittsburgh area, outer fringe. Finley Township also on the outskirts of the Pittsburgh area in Aurora, um, outside of Cleveland. All kind of have some similar type of uh, land use and uh, population distribution. So just to say, talk a little bit about our, um, and I, you know, I don't go too heavy into falls here because you have our package, um, you know, our experience either meets or doesn't meet what you're looking for, but talk a little bit about process and why you guys. So try to keep this pretty high level, simple terms. I don't like a lot of planner jargon because that's just going to confuse people if we don't do this every day. If we're trying to get some community buy and input, let's keep it pretty simple. Identify, assess, recommend, implement. Implement might be the biggest word there, and I think everybody's starting to know what that means. It sounds like you're already doing it. Um, so again, sounds like you want to roll starts under contract this month. It really sounds like so that's great. You know, so we kind of show a schedule that um, reflects that timeline and would wrap up within a year. And when I say wrap up, I mean official approvals, planning commission motion for adoption, uh, recommendation for adoption, and then board adoption. You know, there might be. Sometimes at the end, a month or two in there where somebody gets hung up on a word in a certain paragraph. Usually those things are pretty minor because you have these people involved. Right. Is that uh, timeline shrinkable? Yeah. If you want to, if you think if you think you don't have a lot of rework and you need to accelerate, we can do it. Absolutely. I think 12 months is a it took us eight months for the concept of order, and I was just looking at the order. You, my friend, are about to get run over <laughs> because the stuff will hit the fan starting the first of the year. I think it's going to get hectic. I think it's going to get crazy. And uh, the question is based on the fact that I'm starting to anticipate that we're going to have to we're going to have to deal with something to, to get other things moving the, the rate we need to have. Them. It's shrinkable, you say. Yeah, and I would say if you want to accelerate it, my recommendation would be to work the staff, Mike, to make sure that we set the meeting dates from day one, because that's going to that, believe it or not, is the major driver of oh, when can we get everybody together? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always you know consultant that has another meeting or is on vacation. Sure. It's everybody else has the same thing, and it's a lot of people doing the doodle poll, and there's just not a lot of dates that work for a quorum or those type of things. So I would say if you you know. During contracting, we just set our milestones up from day one. And it, it's always easy to work towards a meeting date when you know you got to be there and present it and have it in the packet a couple weeks before um, we work with you on that. Yeah, particularly the front end of this, the first couple phases up there, one and two. I mean, you guys, you guys did this four or five years ago, right? 2018, I think, was the last plan. Uh, and you kind of know where you want to go, and a lot of people are still the same people from the last plan. Right. That those first couple months can definitely be shrunk. A lot of times that's us coming into a place that's you know, 15 years ago, they did a plan and nobody's left and they have all new ideas and they want to start over and there's a whole 
full couple meetings of just all right what are the ideas what are, what are we trying to focus on where it sounds like anyways that you guys kind of already know your focus is and where you want to go and okay we just need to tweak these and then push these forward so that front end can be consolidated a little bit for sure we certainly want the public's input we don't have to listen to them so i think one of the big issues that <laughs> that one of the big issues that you know we have as planners is getting the public input. I think we have an excellent hook to get more people involved than typical because right now we are getting more and more complaints about short term rentals. Yeah. And we have decided that we are going to tackle that this winter. Planning Commission doesn't know this yet, but it's uh, one of the topics we're going to be looking at. And so I've talked with the supervisor and our thought was we can send out mailings to everyone who lives on lakes, you know, which is probably two thirds of the township mm -hmm. to get them to an open house for, for the master plan where we can include talk about short term rentals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think getting that public participation early and getting, you know, getting the word out. You know, I think that's going to be a benefit to this process as a whole. Yeah, and if you have a something that goes out that's not, you know, a flyer for the plan, something that people are reading for another reason or a hot yeah. topic, um, utility bills, whatever, that you know, scan a QR code or come to the meeting or both. Right. That's a good way to captive audience, catch people where they are on things that we've done a lot of different ways of trying to get people out and engaged. Um, I think right here, for example, we did, we did uh, get the township self put up yard signs, maybe 20 or 30 of them throughout the, the township. Places people go, places people gather, that helped really stir up some, some interest. Uh, we have sent out flyers with QR codes and meeting dates and literally sent them to if it's small enough or you know, enough uh, households, it's not like 30,000 households or something. Right. Um, Send them right to people and see if you get participation that way. Um, but yeah, pairing it with something that's already in people's minds is, is always better than trying to do it as a standalone. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different ways, and this kind of just segues into the community engagement slide here. Um, you know, we we do a whole host of engagement. We really try to cater it to to your needs. So we can go. Uh, as big as all this is up here, or streamline it to something that you want to have a little more focused input on. Uh, some communities um, want more public engagement than others. So we try to stress more public engagement because you get more voices in the room, you start to hear more themes and more trends, and you can take that information and kind of consolidate it into some, some recommendations and some themes. Uh, this is an example of a, a plan we did outside of Cincinnati in an interim suburb called Thera. Uh, they are sort of a bellwether example of, of public engagement. Uh, we did uh, your typical public forums. We did five public forums, uh, steering committee ma meetings, which are typical of any planning process. We did do the working groups, as Amy uh, mentioned, with Brighton. We did some focus groups there. Same thing, working groups, focus mm -hmm. groups. Uh, themed around topics that are important. Maybe it's Thompson Road, maybe it's the housing and Airbnb issues where we bring in people that have some uh, locals but have expertise in these fields or have interest in these fields and can help lead a discussion as to how we move, best move forward. Uh, sometimes that's better than just having a steering committee meeting where we're trying to get all kinds of other stuff done and don't have enough time to necessarily focus on on some of these bigger topics. So uh, we use that in Madera. They had four working groups uh, that met three times throughout the planning process, uh, similar fashion that we said with Brighton, sort of going up, talking up to the uh, steering committee, having other liaison as part of those working groups. And then uh, business interviews, I always think are important, uh, trying to get some feedback from the business community within, within the township. Uh, they always have uh, you know, unique views. Uh, they're looking at it from a different perspective than a resident is. Um, we, we did those uh, in Madeira and tried to do those in most places that we go. And then we did uh, event outreach events, which I think are always very helpful, pre especially pre-pandemic, uh, where on the bottom uh, right there, those are some of the uh, events that we were 
uh, out at in Madeira, we have uh, boards with uh, the board there with all the pins on it. We kind of call them traveling boards. We bring them to events with us, ask high level questions. Sometimes we have some ideas about recommendations, maybe a trail, where, is, where do you want to see it? Uh, we have a board where we can, hey, have you interact with us, put a pin, put a sticker, or give us, put a post-it note on there, tell us what you think. That's a way to interact with people where they're at in their daily lives instead of uh, coming to a public meeting separately. A lot of people don't have time to come to a public meeting. Really, the whole synopsis of this slide is trying to engage people as best we can where they're at in the many different forums. Uh, I didn't mention the survey, but we do a lot of community surveys online in print uh, to try to gauge community interest on themes. And then also, uh, if, if desired, when we have some ideas about recommendations, putting out a second survey to sort of get feedback on if these recommendations are really the path that people want to see. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a piece of the puzzle, like you said. Uh, it's just because uh, you know, some people in the public don't agree with some of the recommendations doesn't mean that we're not hearing from stakeholders and business owners that say we want this and it's a direction that the township might want to go. Uh, not everybody is always in agreement with everything that comes out of these plans, but it's uh, the more voices you hear, the easier it is to start putting themes together uh, to try to you know fix some of those those issues that you're hearing. So. Uh, we like to try to do as much uh, as you're comfortable with. Uh, these are all sort of the tools that, that we have used in the past. And I really think the event outreach stuff is, is probably the best because you, you do a public meeting and get people. If there's something going on or there's some people are really mad, you might get more than that. But mm -hmm. outside of that, uh, it's really difficult to get people to come out to those things. So the events have been very, very uh, popular. Yeah, and I would just add that, you know, this. Kind of board obviously that physical old school but qr codes and certainly during the pandemic everybody up their game a little bit to make sure we got the virtual input that can be duplicated online so there's a parallel version of it we do get a lot of questions about voter integrity and someone can cheat yeah 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 this is not voting and that's it goes for the officials and the survey that we do online it is restricted to one per ip address sometimes we even take a step further give us your uh, household address one per address we verify it. Could someone use another address or fake address? Yeah, maybe, but this is not voting. It doesn't mean, you know, again, it's a piece of input. So I always like to stress that. Do uh, you contact uh, the schools? Yeah, they'd be one of the stakeholders that we would try to, to meet okay. with throughout this process and others. I mean, you know, the DNR if, and even honestly, surrounding Fenton, I think talking even to the village would be beneficial just to see you know see what they're doing is it in line with what you're doing is there mm -hmm. a partnership potential sometimes just talking to some of these stakeholders like hey you're doing a plan i know there might be animosity between the village and the i would never <laughs> suggest <laughs> 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 well no i look uh but you're my, looking to implement you're yes. looking to have partners you're going to probably need partners in most and, things you know do. whatever it is on, on you know government level for the people these lines are imaginary well, that's it's, know where they live. it's the fact, yeah. Well, well right. Yeah. They live in I get people here's calling a, from here's a lake right here with 800 homes on it, and I don't think anybody has any idea that the city is the south end and the township is the north end. I mean, yeah. a fair amount do, but you know, they, you always get questions out. And, why, why aren't you guys doing something with that over there? Well, it's uh -huh. the city, you know, <laughs> we're the township, and here we are just just divvying up a single lake. Like in many places where people don't even know that they live in the township, they think they live in the city or the village or just, uh, right. adjacent to it. So, um, yeah, I, I totally, totally understand that. But just, yeah, from a government level, I mean, if you're looking to implement things, talking to those stakeholders, letting them know that you're putting a plan together and here's what we're thinking of doing, just to get them on board. Maybe they have something that's paralleling and there's a good chance to, to pair projects with it. Um, talking to all those entities uh, makes sense when you're doing a process like this so that when it comes up in you know, six months and you're like, hey, we want to do this, they're not blindsided. They know that something's happening and maybe they're willing to pitch in if it's something that makes sense for them. But <laughs> Well, pathways. I mean, we go oh. with both cities. You want to sit in the city of the city of Miami mm -hmm. and Argentine Belgium. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think everybody's on board in that regard. 
common ground, right? If you know, pathways are only good if they go somewhere, it's not much good if they just stop or arbitrary political jurisdiction. I uh, just to kind of, I guess, go through the, the first couple of phases, and again, these are phases that you know, Michelle highlighted up there two months, but uh, with you guys knowing doing a plan in the last couple of years and having a lot of the same people knowing that you. Uh, kind of where you want to go this can obviously be shorter but really all we're doing in this in this phase is kind of uh, figuring out what your high level planning issues are meeting with the steering committee for that first time meeting with staff trying to get an idea of, of what the priorities are uh, and, and but figuring out that engagement strategy how do we want to engage who do we want to engage how often uh coming up with that strategy and then and really coming up with sort of the, the, the vision and statement going forward and there probably already is a vision statement that you already have and it's more about looking back at that and saying mm -hmm. okay look at your old plan and kind of tweak some things so uh obviously uh, this can be uh consolidated uh within the, the timeline there uh the assessment phase as well uh, really, if you did five years ago, we're just looking at demographics, updating, so maybe land uses have changed, checking on, on the zoning, uh, obviously looking at that Thompson that, that corridor plan a little bit closer and trying to get an idea of exactly uh, what's been done and what's uh, you know, about to be done. Uh, try to build off some of that and, and continue to move forward, but that, that, that's really what this phase is, sort of analyzing everything that, that can be analyzed so that we have a good idea of what the demographics are, what the, what the development environment is, what your zoning code allows, you know, what your ideas for people land use are, uh, and looking at what, in some cases, what the fiscal impacts that might be. So along like the Thompson Road corridor, uh, you're looking to potentially change zoning along that corridor to mixed use town center. I looked at it briefly. I, I saw some areas of a town center on the western side, maybe. Sure. Uh, you know, what did read almost take a look at that and reassess that and saying, you know, what what are uh, this is the only thing that matters, but you know, if we change that land use to this, what's the bottom line impact for us from a uh, tax perspective? Is it worth the cost of putting all these utilities in? You're already doing that, so I guess that might not be the greatest example. But uh if there are other areas along time, so well, maybe also the opposite, right? Uh I again I view the township as sort of in this transition. Things and you know, the next couple of years, they want to define what direction the township goes in. Uh, I know that there is a concern about you know utility creep, and then there's probably portions of the township that don't need you know utilities to maintain their rural character, you know. And, and so, you know, I think that's got that has to be a big part of it too. They identify. But, you know where the urban service boundary should be because I, I don't think anyone would say the entire township should be serviced by water and sewer. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And you know we need to strengthen that, identify those areas, and have that justification. So when those external pressures are coming, we can say no. You know we identify these areas as the growth areas. These have to stay the same because that is part of the character of the township. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, make, that makes sense. And that's something that will give you, you know, look at the areas where, hey, we want to develop. And here's what we, you know, if we fully develop these areas, this is the bottom line impact to our, our tax base over time. And can we support that? Can we support that and do the things that, you know, you know the trails and the other things that we want to do throughout the township? And does that make us financially viable? Just something to consider when we're looking at all these things. Obviously, it's all about having a balance when you're trying to keep some rural character as well. This is just really a Aurora example that anyone just threw up there from when we are working. We're actually finishing up in Aurora right now outside of Cleveland. It's a city, but it has the exact same issue where it uh, does not want to grow anymore at all. It's under a lot of pressure to grow. Uh, and what they've done is they just have not expanded the water and sewer system. There's a segment of the city that will just never get it. Uh, the cost is, is way too high and they do not want it Anyway, so they've zoned large lot, they buy land. Uh, <laughs> the city is actively buying They basically have their own green belt from the city, but they've been buying land to also stop development from happening. So they've kind of attacked it on three fronts. Uh, so again, something they consider, uh, you know, you guys are thinking about trying to keep portions of the township rural, obviously it's zoning. 
it's also utility, but it also could be, you know, preserving some land as well, be conservation, whatever it might be, uh, to make sure that in over time that doesn't turn into a development. Those are some of the tools. From a demographic standpoint, uh, Genesee County um, is not growing in population. It is not growing in employment base. Um, there is um, the plume of displacement from the north end of the county to the south end of the county. And so uh, that's what's taking place. Your same number of people are just moving to different areas. And so we need to keep that in mind too. You know, are we going to be adding a hundred thousand new jobs? No. Are we going to be adding a hundred thousand new people? No. So our our growth is going to be slightly above stagnant, and it's just borrowing from another township or municipality. I think your uh, story is, you know, the, the Midwestern story is similar in Cleveland, Akron. Outside of Pittsburgh, all the same. Uh, it's it's not that there's massive growth going on outside of Cleveland. There's not. It's people are are just relocating the deck chairs on the Titanic. Okay, you got it. And then, so yeah, and we actually use Flint as a case study a lot for our work out in Youngstown. Youngstown, very much industrial yeah. city, hit hard, hit by the steel industry. We're letting leaders out there know now that hey. You've had population losses region for 50 years. You need to do something about this. The time. city of Flint, by example, 20 years ago, Genesee County had, uh, uh, let's say, but well, let's just say the city of Flint and suburbs. Uh, the city had 450,000 people in the city and 100,000 in the surrounding suburbs. They now have 100,000 in the city and 450,000 in the surrounding suburbs. Same population, same everything, just moved around. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do think, you know, our experience is in, I know it's there's football jokes to be made, and we always say we're Cleveland, we're Browns, so we don't really care about our high so we don't get it. We carry the burden of being the Lions. Yeah, well, that's the other thing's like, well, we got the Lions, so, we're, you know, we're, yeah, right. we're kind of in the same boat. <laughs> so you can miss with us there. Yeah, we could well, it's, uh, fry over beers. You're conscious of our <laughs> It comes into play. People think we're going to be robust and growing and everything else. And it will be, but it will be a real slow, displaced pace from starting the community. Absolutely. Um, you know, just to touch a little bit on it. So we talked about J6 Advisors and what she brings on economic impacts. And part of the thing here, and this is an example of something we did outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, this was a township that had a lot of industrial plate space. It's a really good location by the airport and some toll roads. Um, but for a hypothetical industrial park, we were basically able to generate what direct, indirect, induced um, economic impacts would be for employment and spending in the area. And this was helpful to say to regional stakeholders, hey, by investing in infrastructure in the new township, this is what you're supporting from a regional perspective. So that goes into the partnerships. Some of these things are going to extend beyond your boundaries and you might not even see these impacts in the township. But if you're partnering for an interchange at the state level with DOT, this, this might be a nice value add as you're advocating for your project. Yeah, these are the kind of things. Oh, building page the Yeah. So, you know, Thompson Road, this is kind of an exercise that could go out there. Again, we're not going to. You know, have exact numbers. We're looking more at a big picture and a master plan. I don't want to get too granular, but this could help build the business case for you know different land use changes, infrastructure. Recommendations as well straightforward as it gets. I mean, this is what do we want to do? Um, obviously, future land use map is a big one. It sounds like again, we're doing a save as we're pretty good with where we're going. The infrastructure is already underway, there's a plan, so this doesn't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel. You take the ground running, take what you've got. And if there's other focus areas that you haven't looked at, maybe it's some of those balanced mm -hmm. growth areas where you say, this is a transitional zone. Maybe I have a conservation development where I allow a little more density, but it's net neutral for the site. So we have one acre lots here, but there's a green space buffer around, and everything beyond that's big lots. Everything closer to the highway is mixed use to light industrial, you know, more traditional subdivision. So those are things we look at. And it's all a dialogue. I don't want to preempt the process. Mm -hmm. What would be done? Um, you know, implementation, 
sounds like you guys are, you know, pro economic development, so redevelopment ready communities. Uh, we went through mobilizing for this exercise in Brighton. They really weren't into that. So we, we learned our, okay. we learned a little bit the learning curve. We learned about how the township doesn't own roads, the road commission owns roads. We learned about the 3939, you know, whatever formula that is at the state level for the road funding. So we kind of got a little bit of our Michigan bearings on that project. There's a little learning curve. I think we can speak the lingo. I think we understand how things work. Again, very similar to Ohio, though, especially Northeast Ohio region with kind of that Rust Belt mentality and how sort of the issues we talked about, loss of manufacturing, the legacy industries over time, reinventing yourself, moving around within the region. We're very much used to these kind of similar uh, issues. You know, obviously, just looking, you guys uh, in the Michigan area here have a very similar setup for economic development to Prospector that your uh, Flint Genesee County Economic Development Corporation has mm -hmm. got out there for the shovel ready sites. These sites are in there because you've loaded or somebody's loaded, you know, provided that data, has certain utilities, you know how many watts of electricity, you know the uh, sewer capacity or what you're lacking. You know the zoning, <clears throat> wetlands, all those things, and you're able to input these sites and have your hand up. So when a developer, a site selector comes in with a request for information RFI, you can say, yeah, this is a site that meets that criteria. Please consider it. They funnel that up um, to people looking for these sites. So, you know, strategies for this area, sites like these, additional sites, what do we need to do to bring them up to snuff? That would all be part of the implementation strategy. And I think we approach that a little differently in most firms from a planning perspective. Uh, I always talk about infrastructure funding because we do have that technical background, so we know enough to say this is how you get money. Sounds like you're already doing this, so we might not need to do a ton there. But infrastructure bill, um, sometimes they call this bipartisan infrastructure law, sometimes infrastructure investment and jobs act. But it's all the same thing. It's the trillion through the feds. It's over five years. It might be reauthorized for another five years after that. There are opportunities here. It doesn't mean that Fenton Township is going to have a project that fits well in a program might mean it's formula funding, it comes down to the state, and then you go through the state rather than directly to the feds. Uh, but whatever the mechanism, it's good to be aware of this stuff. We're actually paid by several of our clients to track this, so you get that value added. We have the templates of where the funds are going. We stay on top of this stuff. Um, I you know, kind of finished with the our implementation focus. We've got over 50 million in federal grants for our clients in the last six years. So you know, that's federal experience. Those, that doesn't matter if it's in Ohio or Michigan, Pennsylvania, or New York. We've done it um, kind of around that rim of Lake Erie there. Um, these are grants that Economic Development Administration, DOT, uh, not Appalachian, so I'll talk about Appalachian Regional Commission. Uh, but they're all sources we've worked with, Department of Energy funding, things we've done to understand how to sell your projects and to get enough into your master plan to get to the point of what you're doing here. And sometimes it's just having a page down there and says, hey, here's a sketch, that line, you know, the old marker drawing, and maybe a ballpark of a few million. You might not even know the cost yet. You might have to do the study. But this is a priority for us. And we have community support for that. If you can check those two boxes, that's a pretty good plus to have in a funding application when you attach that or even screen cap and put it right into the body of the text. Um, so that's why we always encourage people to think ahead. It sounds like you're already doing that. And you can just hit the ground running and Hey, what's the next chase? And we get that engagement. Um, just to wrap up, we do think we engage your community. So people always ask me because you know if this is a lump sum not to exceed. Well, how can you not set the number of meetings here? How can you be identifying that in the first phase? You cheat on the meetings and don't meet with everybody that wants to meet. You have to rewrite the plan and edit it more. It all kind of works itself out, I believe. But there's sort of a pre-market approach to that. So we, if you have people who want to get engaged, we'll sit down and talk to them. Usually we get better input. It's just a little bit easier than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have relevant experience, especially in that outer fringe. Uh, you, you know, we worked in the urban core. We worked in really rural areas, but I would say two thirds of our clients are kind of on that suburban, and that might just be a population trend of where people live now in our region. <laughs> that might be the reason for that. We have the technical background, legal. We bring in the economic development piece, and we are implementation focused. So, turn it over to. Questions now on progress related to No, that was uh, very good. Um, and we do, uh, you know, it seems like we just did this plan off yesterday, kind of thing, even though it's been that long. But nothing moves faster here except for the water. I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, 
there's a storage facility here on um, Thompson and Tor. And when I got here, there's only, you know, we have plans for water, but don't play with the water. Water's never coming. <laughs> About six months after we approved that, you know, water started to become a discussion. And then 12 months later, it was like, all right, we're not, we're done discussing. Water is coming. And, you know, to say that, I would say things didn't just move fast. No, I'd but say you since know, Vince but has been politically with fast. the infrastructure funding, I mean, that's lit a fire under a lot of issues, a lot of, of programs. It, so. And we have a new supervisor who's being proactive, you know, he's involved in a lot of development issues that, you know, the pre, I, I think the, the previous supervisor had more of a social view. You know, the township, you know, handling the, being the parent, right, to all the residents. And, and now Vince is more, all right, I help out our residents. We need to improve our non residential tax base. How can we do that? And that's been a lot of his focus. So more strategic. But I, I would say things have definitely started moving faster than that I've ever seen anywhere, it, you know. Right, particularly okay. in, in a bedroom community like this. Definitely. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to try and figure out what your cheat sheet was for four years to uh, get an infrastructure project that you mentioned. Because, you know, I mean, you always talk 10 years, you know. Well, we talked to Vince. Vince is telling us maybe three years. So, <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Uh, I mean, <laughs> DOT, NEPA, that's tough stuff. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of time. So, you know, you can, you know, so you know, one of the you know, we talk about just doing a master plan. You know, the whole world has changed, right? Since the last time we did, did a master plan. You know, what type of things are you seeing in the plans you're working on that have been, that you know, the the new paradigm, you know, with you know the results of COVID and, and I don't know, vocation means as much as it used to. You yeah. know. Yeah. So I guess from you know, I'll start with kind of like where you saw those shovel ready sites. Um, we used to see, you know, maybe one out of six or seven of those in the Rust Belt be like a corporate headquarters office. Sometimes flex with office up front to kind of facility or advancement that we can get. That's almost now from the data we get, it's almost entirely light industrial, you know, advancement protection, whatever it is. It's not people building headquarters. So mm -hmm. that piece, that office piece, which was tough enough, um, in, generally our Rust Belt markets, you know, construction costs go up every year. Office rents have been stagnant for decades. So it's really tough to get office done, but that was pre-pandemic. So we've seen that kind of mm. die. Um, we have seen some interest in the suburban side of kind of like a satellite, not at corporate headquarters, but a smaller space for a big enough company that, hey, you come in two or three times a week. And this is a, a little bit less formalized. Maybe it's places you sit and land and you have some meetings and it's not the nine to five. I will tell you, we look at a lot of market data. We use, I think, get to the big brothers watching, but we have cell phone data that shows kind of how people move generally and algorithms and we're able to see where people are commuting to. You're not seeing those peak hour traffic like used to before. People, even for the people who are back into work every day, they're a little more flexible on their schedule. And companies, for the most part, are realizing if we want to retain people, we got to give them some flexibility to you know, go back to their, how they were living for two years and things like that. So, I see definitely a lot of flexibility in the work from home and maybe those satellite types of mixed use. On the retail side, which is a whole other issue, um, you know, retail was getting challenging before the pandemic, well, just because of online competition and all the input just in time. We have seen for like when you're talking about mixed use for what you might be trying to do there along Thompson, is kind of flex space retail, experience retail, where you have a coffee shop. And you have some different local vendors and they're each renting space or even sometimes in different settings paying a poor proceed of their profits for that space and i've seen and i've seen it and you know that sounds almost like well that sounds like distressed neighborhood type of stuff we're a little bit you know mm -hmm. wealthy in that i've seen it in strong markets where that's gone on trendy little you know gentrified neighborhoods and they have like oh it's fashion show while people are having drinks and watching a game like that's happening in a sports bar and I'm like, there, there's all sorts of newer trends there. So that's evolving quickly. Um, those are just some of the things we're seeing on that end. Broadband big push in, in some of the communities, especially the ones sort of in the, in the township right now that's 
that's a big thing. They don't have the greatest internet speed, and a lot more people are working from home and, and extending that service and getting better services is a big thing as well. I mean, your short term rental thing is not. Not only you. That's right. A, that's a lot of people. Are I'll tell you this. You know, before the pandemic, uh, we weren't receiving complaints about it. But since a lot more people. Oh man, like that. it is ridiculous the number of complaints I've been getting. Mm -hmm. And the state has been debating though that would take local communities control away from them. So it's always been like, all right, well, let's see what they do first. But that's very uh, similar to Ohio. Ohio has the same type of bill that has been stopped that was going to take away local local control as well uh, so yeah it's a, it, that's a new issue too people are they, I can go I can go around a place for a couple of days do my work there and go hang out on my lake why would I stay at my house you know that's, that's happening more and more I, I mean I've done it so I'm sure those are sort of the trends, some of the digital things. And you might be uniquely attractive for that because you kind of, and this is similar to Brighton, we've been through this exercise. Well, if you were somebody that's doing corporate business and hits a region, and let's say you're a sales guy or a uh, girl that goes and hits multiple different um, suppliers, you could get Lansing, Prince, Detroit, Ann Arbor kind of based out of here for a week. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some of that going on. Uh, uh, there's more than some. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I came out of the uh, relatively large sales and marketing organization. Uh, it was a Japanese company. And when I started there, they expected you in the office, late would be 801. And that was your point where you were supposed to be putting your plan together or doing whatever you're going to do. And I fought with the Japanese, tooth and nail. My people are in cars. They've got areas to cover. They've got to drive an hour or two hours to get to their first site. Mm -hmm. They do not need to come in this office, you know, to show you that they've got a blue suit on with appropriate time. It's silly. Yeah. I eventually won. Then again, they ran me out. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are helpful comments. But... So, how do you view this budget compared to what uh, Brighton's budget was? Actually, it's, I was looking back at Brighton's budget just to make sure I'm like, well, I, I figured because you put it at 36 that you were more or less to say that like you you were good with what you did last five years ago. Yeah, so I think I put 15% of what it was last time. Yeah, and we were at 38 for Brighton. Mm -hmm. And they were an update too, and they had one for five years ago. Um, so... You know, would I if I had just bid blindly, I might have been a little closer to 40. But I think hearing what I heard here that we don't have to go through a lot of recreate the wheel, I'm very mm -hmm. comfortable with that, that no. number and getting the input. So here. something so like the improper product would be something similar to what brought in that. Yeah, I think it would it would look different because you have some different they were very much preservation oh, pathways. Sure. It was like green space. But I mean, the, the process. Of, oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. All that. Everything we talked about, and you know, we can, if you you know, have any hesitation there, we can put down it's this many steering committee meetings, this many focus groups in the scope. So mm -hmm. we're contracted that way. I get that some people want it very steps. But for here with that budget, you know, whatever you need to get it. And we do, you know, this is lump sum meaning, you know, we bill at certain intervals along the way, but we don't get paid, so you have an approved plan by your board. So there's skin in the game for us to keep this moving and get something that the community's going to do. Sure. It's the only way to do it. To do it. Great. I don't have any more questions. I think you did a uh, um, very thorough presentation. Understandable. Appreciate you coming in. Well, appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Well, it's our pleasure.